All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our January session of Back to Baseline and Beyond webinar series. Today's webinar is on Medicare's coverage of diabetes care within the annual wellness visit. I am Mary Funseth, and I'm a quality improvement advisor for Superior Health Quality Alliance, part of the chronic disease management team, and I'm going to be your host for this session. For those of you who have joined us before, glad to have you come back. And if this is your first time joining this webinar series, we are glad to have you. This webinar series, Back to Baseline and Beyond, post-COVID management of patients with chronic conditions, is focused on helping care providers across the continuum of care use lessons learned and look for new ways to improve management of chronic disease and conditions and to help improve outcomes for our patients. As you know, all your patients are coming back through those doors and a whole lot of new things are happening. Uh, so first of all, we'd like to have you take a minute and put in the chat your name, your organization, your facility, and your role. And then that way we can get a little bit, get to know each other a little bit. Also a few housekeeping things. We would love to have you please mute your line unless you're asking questions during the question and answer phase of the presentation. And in the meantime, if you have questions before we get there, please feel free to put those in the chat. Anytime is fine for us to add something to the chat and we will pause as possible uh, to get your answers. Next slide, please. As a reminder, these sessions take place on the third Tuesday of each month, and they occur both same session, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time or 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and again, repeated 3.30 Central Standard Time and 4.30 Eastern Standard Time. So on this slide, you're going to see some of the future topics we will be discussing. Our session next month is on motivational interviewing. It'll be an excellent topic to attend. I hope you don't miss it. Also share it with your colleagues because I think this is going to help a lot of folks to attend that session. Please note that the schedule could be subject to change as important and time sensitive information comes our way and it may cause us to change the session at that time. But the dates and the times do not change just possibly the topics. So please, please chat in suggestions for future topics that you would like to hear about. That's going to help us greatly. And we want to thank you if you have suggestions at any time. So our session again next month is that motivational interviewing. And it was a topic that was requested by all of you. So next. Next slide. I'd really like to introduce to you now our speakers of today's session. We will have Michael Doris, a jur jurisdiction affairs lead, and Kathy Mersch, provider outreach and education consultant. They'll tell you a little bit more about themselves. And I will hand it over to Michael and Kathy. And next slide, please, Jerry. Yes, hello. And uh, together, Kathy and I, um, I'm Michael Doris. Kathy and I have nearly 50 years of combined Medicare experience. And on this slide that you're seeing before you, it's our disclaimer that says basically um, we are a contractor of the federal government and we get our information from CMS, which is the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Um, and we rely also on Congress and Health and Human Services to determine law and regulations. And as a Medicare administrative contractor, which Kathy will go in more, uh, we implement those laws and regulations as such. <clears throat> Next slide. Um, our, here's our agenda, and it's really to give you an understanding as our role as a uh, Medicare administrative contractor, and we're known as National Government Services. And we have been a Medicare contractor since uh, 1966. And the Medicare program was enacted in 1965. Uh, our objective here is to help you understand NGS and how NGS 
and CGS and CMS work, share examples of hot topics and educational resources. And with that, I'll turn it over my, rest, my, my time to Kathy to start today's agenda. Thank you, Michael. Hello, everyone. My name is Kathy Marsh, and it is a pleasure to be here with you today. I wanted to take a few moments and discuss the National Government Services role as a CMS MAC. Next slide. Go ahead and go to the next one, sorry. Thank you. I apologize. By now, I'm sure that you have heard the term Medicare Administrative Contractors or MACs. MACs are made up of private insurance companies under contract with CMS to administer each part of the Medicare program. As the current J6 and JK MAC, NGS is categorized as a fee-for-service operation. A fee-for-service MAC processes claims and handles all Medicare operations for those providers in specific MAC jurisdictions. NGS processes claims for Part A and B, as well as claims for home health and hospice providers via our home health and hospice contract. Contractors are bound by specific service areas that are defined by CMS. J6 MAC jurisdiction states include Illinois, Minnesota, and Wisconsin, and a few in Michigan. JK MAC jurisdiction states include Connecticut, Maine, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, New York, Rhode Island, and Vermont. In addition, within the J6 and JK contracts, we also serve as the MAC for FQHC and home health and hospice providers in a large number of states. Next slide, please. Now that you know a little bit more about the Medicare contractors, this slide has a helpful tool to help you locate a contractor when you have a question or some other reason that you may need to contact one. The Review Contractor Directory Interactive Map, shown on this slide, will help you to navigate to all of the various MACs and contractors who are responsible for services in each state. Simply go to the CMS website listed on this slide, click on any of the states, and the contractors and their contact information will be displayed for you. Next slide, please. Again, National Government Services is a traditional fee-for-service MAC. NGS has, uh, again, several different types of contracts and, and processes claims for Part A and B, FQACs, and home health and hospice providers uh, for all the states that I just mentioned in J6 and JK. NGS serves 240 members of Congress. NGS also allows Medicare providers to have millions of interactions to answer their educational and billing needs through self-service tools, including the NGS website and NGS Connects, which we will discuss here in a little bit. Um, Michael is going to go on to discuss uh, the elements of that wellness visit, but please uh, stay, stay on and stay in tune. We will go over um, in more detail some resources that are available uh, for you through NGS. Um, and at this time, Mary, did you want to do the polling? Okay. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, we have a poll question for all of you before we move on. Are you familiar with this Medicare contractor and this resource? You either are not familiar at all, somewhat familiar, or very familiar. So we'll let this go on for just a little bit. And again, while we're waiting, don't forget to put your questions in the chat as we move along, and we will try to keep up with those, as well as we'll have some opportunities to open up the mic in a little uh, at the end of the session. Okay, we're gonna end poll in just a couple of seconds. All right, so on the call today, we have folks who are not very familiar, but some equally both familiar and not at all. So uh, you have your work cut out for you today, Kathy and, and Michael. <laughs> so let's this move on. Awesome, awesome information. Thank you for answering that question. Okay, so at this time, I'm going to turn it back over to Michael to talk about Medicare's annual wellness visit, diabetes self-management training, and um, medical uh, nutrition therapy. And then we'll go over some, some awesome resources available uh, for you at the end. Michael? Thank you, Kathy. Um, today, I'll talk to you about the annual wellness visit, 
and the personalized uh, prevention plan. Next slide. Yes, the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act of 2010 authorized an annual wellness visit for Medicare beneficiaries, or better known as the AWV. The AWV does not take place of a routine physical exam, which includes different elements in a physical exam as opposed to the annual wellness visit. Annual wellness visits are not a routine physical. Under this benefit, Medicare beneficiaries work with their physicians to develop and update a personalized prevention plan, which can be adapted as a beneficiary's health needs change over time. Unlike the Welcome to Medicare, the annual wellness visit is a service that is covered each year for the patient. Next slide, please. In order for Medicare to consider coverage of an annual wellness visit, the patient cannot be within the first 12 months of their first Medicare Part B coverage period. As a patient is within this time period is eligible for the Medicare to welcome the Medicare exam. Also keep in mind, if a patient has never received their welcome to Medicare within the 12 months of their eligibility, as past that time, at that point, your patient can receive an annual wellness visit. In addition, since this is an annual benefit, the patient is only eligible to receive a covered AWV every 12 months, counted either from their Welcome to Medicare or their last AWV. There are two types of AWVs. An initial AWV, it is covered once per lifetime, um, and has 12 elements. I'm sorry, I meant to say an initial AWV, uh, which is once, which is like the Welcome to Medicare, is covered once in their lifetime and has 12 elements. And after the initial annual wellness visit, the patient is eligible for subsequent AWV each year after 12 consecutive months have passed since the last covered AWV and has 11 elements. Next slide. Who can perform these AWVs? A physician, MD or DO, qualified nurse practitioner, a CNS, an MP, PA, and a medical professional or team working under direct supervision of a physician. Health educator, which includes a health educator, a registered dietitian, nutrition, professional and other licensed practitioner. Repeat, who can, report, can report, perform this AWV is a physician, a qualified MP, MP, a CNS, MP, and PA. Moving on to the next slide. The AWV is uh, conducted through what's called a health risk assessment. Uh, the AWV uh, includes an evaluation tool known as the HRA, or Health Risk Assessment. The CDC, or the Centers for De Disease Control and Prevention, developed an evidence-informed framework document for health risk assessments, a framework of the patient center health risk assessment. The HRA, at minimum, collects information about demographic data, health status self-assessment, psychosocial risks, including but not limited to the depression slash life satisfaction, stress, anger, loneliness, social isolation, pain, and fatigue, behavioral risks, including but not limited to tobacco use, physical activity, nutrition, oral health, alcohol consumption, sexual health, uh, motor vehicle, for example, seatbelt use, and home safety. And it also includes activities of daily living, including dressing, feeding, toileting, grooming, physical ambulation, including balance slash risk of falls and bathing, and instrumental ADLs, including using the phone, housekeeping, laundry, mode of transportation, shopping, managing medication, and handling finances. 
For more information, you can go to the CDC website under HRA to, to get uh, full uh, details of how HRA uh, frameworks work. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Mary. Thank you, Michael. So we're going to have another poll now. And one moment, please. Our second poll question. Does your clinic or organization offer a wellness visit? Yes, no, unsure, not applicable, as we're not, or just not applicable because of we're not a healthcare clinic or organization. So we'll take a few moments to answer that question. All right, we'll end that poll and here's your results. Number of you are offering that visit. So you can move on. Okay, for the next part of the presentation, I will be discussing the diabetes self-management training or the DSMT. Next slide. All DSMT programs must be accredited and meet qualifying standards by a CMS approved national accreditation organization. Currently, CMS recognizes the American Diabetes Association and the American Association of Diabetes Educators and the Indian Health Service as approved national accreditation organizations. Programs without accreditation by CMS approved national accreditation organizations are not covered. Certified providers may be asked to submit updated accreditation documents at any time. There's a note here on telehealth. Next slide, please. CMS noted that registered dietitians and nurse practitioners are also eligible distance site practitioners and are permitted to furnish and bill for telehealth services, including outside of circumstances of the PHE for COVID-19. All medical nutrition therapy and diabetes self-management training services, with there's one exception of the code G0271, are on the list of telehealth services. Please know that during the PHE for COVID-19, these telehealth services are among those that may be furnished via audio-only telecommunications technology. Audio video technology is not required. Uh, also, it's good to note that the public health emergency was extended just recently from last week uh, to April the 11th. Next slide, please. On this slide, you'll see a designated certified provider will bill for DMSMT services. CMS is designating all providers and suppliers that bill Medicare for other individual services, such as hospital patient departments, renal dialysis facilities, physicians, and durable medical suppliers are certified. All suppliers such providers who may bill for other Medicare services or items and who represent a DSMT program that is accredited as being standards can bill and receive payment for the entire uh, DSMT program. Next slide, please. Here's the question. Can pharmacists bill Medicare for services provided by accredited DSMT program? The answer is a pharmacist can be an instructor for an AADE accredited or ADA recognized DSMT program, but they are, they are not recognized as a Medicare provider and therefore cannot bill independently. For Medicare patients, pharmacists are not recognized as a Medicare Part B providers. However, however registered dietitians are eligible to bill on behalf of the entire DSMT program and must have a Medicare provider number, specialty 771. Next slide, please. For coverage by Medicare, DSMT programs must incorporate the following requirements. 
the DSMP program must provide services to eligible Medicare beneficiaries that are diagnosed with diabetes, and the DSMP program must submit an accreditation certificate from the ADA, the AADE, or the IHS to the local Medicare contractor's provider enrollment department. Next slide, please. So what services are included in the ds &T program? It includes the following services. Uh, instruction and in self-monitoring of blood glucose, education about diet and exercise, insulin treatment plan developed specifically for the patient, and motivation for the beneficiary to use self-management skills. Also, DSV has uh, requirements for coverage. It has to be ordered by a treating physician or qualified MPP managing um, the beneficiary's diabetic condition. And the oral referral must include a statement signed by the physician or qualified uh, MPP that, in that service area and the number of initial or follow-up hours of training ordered can order less than 10 hours but not exceed. 10 hours. And it also must include topics to be covered in training. And it can either indicate individual or group uh, training determinations. Next slide, please. Uh, oftentimes, our provider that providers that provide DSMT ask, How can I verify um, uh, DSMT and MNT hours? I will go in a little bit more about MNT here shortly, but there is a tool called NGS Connects, and Kathy will discuss that a little bit further, but it's a, basically a web portal that provides DSMT and MNT eligibility information to show initial date of service, minutes of initial time remaining, and minutes of follow-up time remaining. Next slide, please. Beneficiary eligibility. Coverage of services only for beneficiary diagnosed with diabetes mellitus, fasting blood sugar, which is 100 less than, greater than less than um, 126 milligrams, or two different occasions, two hour post glucose challenge, uh, greater than less than 200 milligrams on two different occasions, and random glucose tests over 200 milligrams for a person with symptoms of uncontrolled diabetes. And also A1C is not accepted for supporting um, a diagnosis of diabetes. Um, it's in the regulation that that cannot be the only uh, reason to receive a DSMD. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Mary. Okay, uh, Michael, I think you can go on because you can go on to your MNT. Thank you. So the next section we will go over uh, MNT, medical nutrition therapy. Just the background, nutrition related health conditions are prevalent within the Medicare population. 28% uh, of Medicare beneficiaries have diabetes and 50% have chronic kidney disease. Adult obesity is associated with a number of serious health conditions, including heart disease, hypertension, diabetes, and some cancers. Registered dietitian and nutrition professionals are key providers of nutrition services. They can play a critical role in helping Medicare patients improve their health and prevent and manage many health chronic conditions. Next slide, please. MNT services. The MNT benefit is a uh, completely separate benefit from the DSMT benefit. For the purpose of disease management, covered MNT services include the following an initial nutrition and lifestyle assessment, one on one nutritional counseling, information regarding diet management, follow up sessions to monitor progress. Next slide talks about eligibility. In order for this preventive service period to be covered, the beneficiary must have diabetes, 
renal disease or has a received a kidney transplant within the last 36 months. MNC services are not covered for beneficiaries who receive maintenance dialysis for which payment is paid separately in the Social Security Act, Section 1881. A physician must provide a referral and indicate a diagnosis of diabetes or renal disease. Non-physician practitioners cannot make referrals for this service. Next slide, please. MNC coverage. The benefit provides three hours of one-on-one -on -one MNC services for the first year and two hours of coverage each year for subsequent years. No initial hours can be carried over to the next calendar year. Based on medical necessity, additional hours may be covered if a physician orders additional hours of MNC based on a change in, me in the medical condition, diagnosis, or treatment regimen. The number of hours covered in an episode of care may not be exceeded unless a second referral is received from a physician. MNT services may be provided either on an individual or group basis without restriction. You can utilize our call center, what's called the um, IVR, to determine MNT eligibility information, including the initial date and minutes remaining for initial or follow up training. Eligibility information is based on the date you call. Next slide. Here's an example of MNT hours usage. We have an example of how the MNT hours work. It's per calendar year. Medicare covers three hours of MNT in a beneficiary's initial calendar year. No initial hours can be carried over to the next calendar year. So, so here's our hypothetical. If a, if a physician gives a referral to a beneficiary for three hours of MNT, but let's say the beneficiary only uses two hours in November and nothing more, the calendar year ends in December, so the third hour is not used, it cannot be carried over to the following year. However, the following year, the beneficiary is eligible for two follow-up hours with a physician's referral. Every subsequent calendar year, a beneficiary must have a new referral for those two follow-up hours. Next slide. I wanted to give you the uh, billing codes that are available for MNT. 9702 is used to be used uh, only for the initial assessment of the patient. Uh, code 97803 is to be billed for the initial, for the individual reassessment and all interventions after the initial visit. This code should be also be used when there is change in the patient's medical condition that affects the nutritional status of the patient. 9704 is used for all subsequent groups visits, and this code can be also be used when there is a change in the patient's condition that affects the nutritional status of the patient and the patient is attending in a group. These codes, can, these codes can be paid as submitted by a registered dietitian or a nutrition professional who meet the previously specified requirements or a hospital that has received reassigned benefits from a registered dietitian or nutritionist. These services cannot be paid incident to physician services. And with that, uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Kathy to wrap up the presentation. Kathy? Actually, we're gonna do another quick poll. So, Sorry about that. <laughs> no problem. We are going to launch the poll now. And the question is for our viewers, do you have DSMT and MNT programs? No, yes, yes, but not accredited. DSMT only, not MNT. We refer out for these programs. I was not aware of these programs. So we'll leave that open for just a little bit. Doing great with the polling questions, everyone. We really appreciate your feedback. Okay, we're ending the poll. We'll share the results. 
And here you have it. Some of you do have these programs. And uh, what's interesting here is some of you are not aware of these programs, which is great that we're bringing this to your attention. And it shows uh, there are some folks here also who are referring out. So uh, let us know if you'd like some more information on these programs, because we'd certainly like to provide you with what you're looking for. So next we'll have Kathy move it on. All right, thank you. And thank you, Michael, for our, that awesome information that you shared. Um, now let's just, I wanted to, to take some time and go over some resources that are available to the provider community. Next slide, please. This is the NGS Medicare combined landing page here on this slide. On the left side, you can access ngsmedicare.com provider content website. This is where you can register for educational events, view Medicare news, find coding and billing information, among other things. If you want to log into NGS Connects to perform secure transactions or inquiries, you will enter your login credentials in the applicable fields on the right side of the page. Please keep in mind, you do not need to enter information in both sides to access NGS Connects. If you are not yet registered for NGS Connects, you can do that by selecting the Create Account link under the login fields. If you are registered and you're having issues with your login or you need to uh, reset or change your password, you can select the can't login link. You can also find additional resources for NGS Connects by selecting helpful links there at the bottom of the screen. Next slide, please. This slide is displaying the home screen of ngsmedicare.com. For easier navigation, the most frequently viewed areas of the website are listed here on the home page. The medical policies tile will provide easy access to NGS's medical policies or local coverage determinations. The enrollment tile will provide information regarding the provider enrollment process. The next tile, Fee Schedules and Pricers, provides detailed prospective payment systems or PPS and pricers information for ESRD, FQHC, inpatient entities and skilled nursing facilities, and more. The Claims and Appeals tile provides information on Medicare beneficiary identifiers, Medicare secondary payer, NGS Connects, and, and top claim errors as well as levels of appeal and time limits for filing and reopening instructions. If you need to know how to respond to an overpayment request, the overpayments tile is where you can start. And last but not least, the Medicare compliance tile will provide you with information on comprehensive error rate testing, fraud and abuse, medical review, prior authorization, recovery audit, a supplemental medical review contractor, and targeted probe and educate. Next slide, please. As you can see, navigating the NGS Medicare website is easier than ever. There is a wealth of information available to the provider community within a few clicks. Here on this slide, I'm showing you the education tab of the website. This is another avenue for providers to access a wide array of information. The Medicare topics tile allows providers to access detailed information uh, regarding appropriate use criteria, beneficiary notice initiatives, billing, clinical trials, coding and edits, COVID-19, documentation, home infusion therapy, modifiers, pain management, uh, tobacco cessation, and much more. You can also select a specialty to learn more about in the specialties tile. This encompasses ambulance, uh, laboratory pathology, opioid treatment, skilled nursing facilities, and more. Are you looking for Medicare Learning Network or MLN articles or informative articles from NGS? These can be located under the news tile on our website. And lastly, the, the manuals and guides tile gives providers access to the EDI e-signature user guide, um, the FIS DDE provider online guide, the fundamentals of Medicare, Medicare Diabetes Prevention Program, telehealth services, and a targeted uh, probe and educate manual. Lots of information out there for the provider community. Next slide, please. 
Here on this slide, I wanted to show you the education events uh, tab that's on our website. You can scroll through the current events listed to find education events that you may be interested in attending. Please note, if you are unfamiliar with the website, the education that is listed in blue, those are active upcoming events. You can simply click on the registration option of the event that you're interested in and follow the prompts to register. I'm not showing it here on the slide, but if you scroll down further, you will see education events that are gray. These events have already been completed. However, you can click the read more option of the event and obtain that presentation uh, from that event if you like. You can also utilize the search engine located in the middle area of the page to look for specific types of education. We always welcome uh, provider feedback on the events that we do. There is a share your education thoughts with us survey um, at the top of the events page. You can share your education experience as well as offer suggestions for future education topics with us. NGS is always striving to meet the needs of the provider community. We offer a wide array of educational webinars. We do in-person education, and we collaborate with a multitude of agencies and entities to assist and educate the provider community. So at this time, I, I wanted to just take a few moments and briefly discuss the self-service tools handout. Um, I, I believe that the link is in the chat. Uh, Mary, is that correct? We are going to put that in the chat momentarily. Okay. All right. Well, you will be receiving that shortly, um, but we just wanted to take a moment and remind the provider community that the Provider Contact Center or the PCC does experience high call volumes at the beginning and the end of each month. We know your time is valuable and we want to remind you of the self-service options available to you, which will allow you to avoid being on the phone for long periods of time. But please keep in mind that CMS does not allow our provider contact center representatives to answer certain questions via phone when you can obtain those answers through self-service tools. So one of those tools is NGS Connects. NGS Connects is a free, secure, web-based tool available to the provider community. This application was revamped, if you will, in February of last year. I have navigated this new application and I'm so excited about the simplicity of this tool. In NGS Connects, you have the ability to verify patient eligibility, obtain claim and appeal status, respond to medical and claims ADRs, submit credit balance reports, review financial information and more. I'm currently working with the NGS Connects team to develop additional education opportunities for the provider community, so please be on the lookout for those upcoming events. If you have not had a, a chance to go out and, and check out NGS Connects, I, I strongly recommend venturing out to our, our website and, and taking a look at that. NGS also provides production alerts to the provider community. Stay on top of alerts about our system or other incidents that may delay claim submission and or processing of your claims. You can find production alerts under resources on our website. The Fiscal Intermediary Standard System or FIS is the standard uh, Medicare Part A claims processing system. Providers can obtain beneficiary eligibility information. You can submit, track, correct, adjust, and even cancel claims and view provider-specific reports. The FIS DDE user guide is also available on our website under education, then select manuals and guides. National Government Services has also created Medicare Mobile News. Have you joined yet? You can now stay up to date on the latest Medicare news by texting the word news to 37702 to get exclusive notifications notifications rather straight to your phone. Be the first to hear about breaking news, important updates, virtual events, and more. Staying informed has never been easier, so go please join today. You can also receive uh, Twitter tweets regarding Medicare topics and news, and you can also get email updates to stay up to date on all things Medicare. Please visit our website for further details on those tools. All of the information that I have provided, as well as links to the resources, is available out on our website under education, then select news. 
the, the article that we are sharing is titled, our, uh, Use Our Provider Self-Service Tools to Spend Less Time on the Phone. Please feel free to share this article with your peers. Um, and so I think at this point, um, Michael, did I miss anything? Or is there anything that you would like to add as we wrap up? And I believe we may have another a final polling question as well. Yes, we do. So as, as Michael answers that, I will launch the next uh, two poll questions. The first one is uh, whether or not the group has used this resource of this Medicare contractor, yes, no, or no, but will begin use of the resources. So we'll let that go. And Michael, anything that you wanted to add? No, just just to recap that what Kathy said, we're, we are um, a Medicare administrative contract from CMS, so our information is theirs versus ours. So it's it's very easy to get get confused with the terms um, and all the different uh, abbreviations. Um, but if you're going if you're getting information off our website, it is it is basically CMS approved. Great, thank you. And again, you can start chatting in your questions and we'll open up mics here momentarily. Here is the response from all of you uh, that you haven't uh, necessarily utilized this, and, uh, but you are going to get started. Um, did I hear someone ask a question? Okay, uh, for some reason, our poll number five question will not launch. So bear with me. So it's not launching. So can uh, either Gray or Carrie try to launch the fifth poll question? So yeah, Mary, I've got it pulled up, but it won't launch. I don't okay, know. we'll skip it then, just for the sake of time. Um, and just the basic, the question would have been if you could have answered it, um, whether or not you want to learn more about using this Medicare contractor. So let's use the good old fashioned chat and have everybody chat in. Would you like to hear more from these folks at a future meeting? as well as you can chat in questions and you can also go ahead and open your mic to see if you uh, have any questions for Michael and Kathy. Okay, so I'm not seeing any questions. Can, as you're staying on with us, um, please feel free to still chat them in if you suddenly think of something. Here, if you'll move it to the next slide, please. Okay, and then the next slide after that. So what is next with us is we would really like to encourage all of you to consider coming to Superior Health Connect. It is part of being a participant within Superior Health Quality Alliance. And on the slide, and you will get the slides, uh, you'll be able to connect directly there. It is a great learning management system, no cost as part of your participation. It's there 24 seven, any time of day you can put in uh, uh, requests there through chat functions to all of us. You can also take courses. You can learn about a variety of topics and you can even subscribe to topics. It's a very intentional way for us to share with all of you the many resources we have. 
And we do welcome you to click the link if you can in the future. Uh, next slide, please. We also want to mention to you again, future topics. We don't want you to forget about it. If you signed up for today, you are most likely signed up for the rest of the scheduled topics. However, you can certainly avoid those if you don't want to come to those uh, sessions or if you want to change sessions, you can also just go back in and, and re uh, register. Uh, but that uh, list is always out on our website if you don't find it after today. Next slide, please. All right. And lastly, we do have one more uh, uh, poll question for you. Let's see if this one will work. Nope, this one's not launching as well. I apologize. For whatever reason, it it's, has not decided to launch. So let us just tell you that in the upcoming session, we are going to be providing you with some information about smoking cessation. And so we just wanted to be sure that you were aware of all that. And um, also in this next steps, please check for whether or not you are registered for the upcoming uh, motivational interviewing session, um, as well as check in on Superior Health Connect. Note that we do have an opportunity for you to receive technical assistance from any of us. And you can do that by either directly emailing any of us at Superior Health, but we have a very easy email right here. You can contact Jerry Hineker and she will pass on your request to the person who could best support you. And again, at Superior Health, we absolutely have no cost. We are paid for by the federal government through the Medicare contract. So um, we too are a federal contractor and we are here to help. I also wanna call attention to the chat. We have in there our survey. Please, please complete the survey. It really helps us to improve these sessions and find new topics to bring your way, things that are very important to you. That's what we wanna to provide to you. And with that, any questions as we come to the end of our session? Hearing none, Kathy and Michael, thank you so very much for coming to not one, but two sessions for us. And we look forward to some follow-up questions. Um, and we will send all of you anything that we do uh, provide for any of the sessions as far as follow-up questions that came from the first session and anything more that Kathy and Michael think about that they'd like to send your way. Michael and Kathy? I just wanna say thank you for allowing um, myself and I'm sure Michael as well to participate. It was a pleasure. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. And that will conclude our session today. Bye everyone.